a fat in breathing and exchange of gases as you have read earlier oxygen it utilized by the organism to indirectly break down simple molecules like glucose amino acid fatty acids etc to drive energy to perform various activities carbon dioxide co2 which is harmful is also released during the above catabolic reaction it is therefore evident that o2 has to be continuously provided to the cell and co2 produced by the cell have to be released out this process of exchange of o2 from the atmosphere with co2 produced by the cell is called breathing and commonly known as respiration place your hand on your chest you can feel the chest moving up and down you know that it is due to breathing how do we breathe the respiratory organ and the mechanism of breathing are described in the following section of this chapter 14.1 respiratory organ mechanism of breathing vary among different groups of animal depending mainly on their habitats and level of organization lower invertebrates like sponges cilantrates flatworms etc exchange o2 with co2 by di simple diffusion over their entire body surface Earthworms use their moist cuticle and insect have a network of tubes tracheal tubes to transport atmospheric air within the body special vascularized structure called gills branchial respiration are used by the most of the aquatic arthropods and mollusks where as vascularized back called lungs pulmonary respiration are used by the tertial form for the exchange of gases among vertebrates fishes use gill where as amphibian reptiles birds and mammals respire through lungs amphibians like frog can respire through their moist skin cutaneous respiration also 14.1.1 human respiratory system we have a pair of external nostril opening out above the upper lips it led to a nasal chamber through the nasal passages the nasal chamber opened into the pharynx a portion of which is the common passage of both air and food the pharynx opened through the larynx region into the trachea larynx is a cartilaginous box which help in sound production and hence called the sound box during swallowing glottis can be covered by a thin elastic cartilaginous flap called epiglot to prevent the entry of food into the larynx trachea is a straight tube extending up to the mid thoracic cavity which divide at the level of fifth thoracic vertebrae into a right and left primary bronchi each bronchi undergo repeated division to form the secondary and tertiary bronchi and bronchioles ending up in very thin terminal bronchioles the trachea primary secondary and tertiary bronchi and initially bronchial are spotted by incomplete cartilaginous ring each terminal bronchial gives rise to a number of very thin irregular walled and vascularized bag like structure called alveoli the branching network of bronchi bronchioles and alveoli comprise the lungs we have two lungs which are covered by a double layer pleura with pleura fluid between them it reduces friction on the lung surface the outer pleural membrane is in close contact with the thoracic lining whereas the inner pleural membrane is in in contact with the lung surface the part starting with the external nostril up to the terminal bronchioles constitute the conducting part whereas the alveoli and their duct from the respiratory or exchange part of their respiratory system the conducting part to transport the atmospheric air to the alveoli clear it from foreign particle humidifiers and also bring the air to body temperature exchange part is the site of actual diffusion of o2 and co2 between blood and atmospheric air the lungs are situated in the thoracic chamber which is atomically an air tight chamber the thoracic chamber is formed dorsally by the vertebral column ventrally by the sternum laterally by the ribs on the lower side by the dome shaped diaphragm the atomically set up of lungs in thoracic is such that any change in the volume of the thoracic cavity will be reflected in the lungs pulmonary cavity such an arrangement is essential for breathing 
as we cannot directly alter the pulmonary volume. Respiration involves the following step. First, breathing and pulmonary ventilation by which atmospheric air is drawn in and CO2-rich alveolar air is released out. Second, diffusion of gases, auto and CO2 across alveolar membrane. Third, transport of gases by the blood. Fourth, diffusion of auto and CO2 between blood and tissue. Fifth, utilization of auto by the cell for catabolic reaction and resultant release of CO2 cellular respiration as dealt in Chapter 12. 14.2 Mechanism of Breathing Breathing involves two stages. Inspiration during which atmospheric air is drawn in and expiration by which the alveolar air is released out. The movement of air into and out of the lungs is carried out by creating a pressure gradient between the lungs and the atmosphere. Inspiration can occur if the pressure within the lungs intrapulmonary pressure is less than the atmospheric pressure. That means there is a negative pressure in the lungs with respect to atmospheric pressure. Similarly, expiration takes place when the intrapulmonary pressure is higher than the atmospheric pressure. The diaphragm and a specialized set of muscle external and inter intracostal between the ribs help in generation of such gradient. Inspiration is initiated by the concentration of diaphragm which increases the volume of thoracic chamber in the anterior posterior axis the concentration of external intercostal muscle lifts up the ribs and the sternum causing an increase in the volume of the thoracic chamber in the dorsoventricle axis the overall increase in the thoracic volume causes a similar increase in pulmonary volume and increase in pulmonary volume decrease the intrapulmonary pressure to less than the atmospheric pressure which forces the air from outside to move into the lung that means inspiration re relaxation of the diaphragm and the intercostal muscle return the diaphragm and sternum to their normal position and reduce the thoracic volume and thereby the pulmonary volume this lead to an increase in intrapulmonary pressure to slightly above the atmospheric pressure causing the expulsion of air from the lungs that means expiration we have the ability to increase the strength of inspiration and expiration with the help of additional muscle in the abdomen on an average a healthy human breathe 12 to 16 times per minute the volume of air involved in breathing movement can be estimated by using a spirometer which help in clinically assessment of pulmonary function 14.2.1 Respiratory Volumes and Capacities Tidal Volume TV Volume of air inspired or expired during a normal respiration is uh, approximately 500 ml. That means a healthy man can inspire or expire approximately 6000 to 8000 ml of air per minute. Inspiratory Reserve Volume IRV A person can inspire by a forceful inspiration. This average 2500 ml to 3000 ml. Expiratory reserve volume ERV. A person can expire by a forceful expiration. This average 1000 ml to 1100 ml. Residual volume RV. Volume of air remaining in the lungs even after a forceful expiration. This average 1100 ml to 1200 ml by adding up a few respiratory volume described above one can derive various pulmonary capacities which can be used in clinically diagnosed inspiratory capacities ic total volume of air a person can inspire after a normal expiration this include tidal volume and inspiratory reserve volume tv plus irv expiratory capacity ec Total volume of air a person can expire after a normal inspiration. This includes tidal volume and expiratory reserve volume TV plus ERV. Functional residual capacity FRC. Volume of air that will remain in the lungs after a normal expiration. This includes ERV plus RV. Vital capacity VC. The maximum volume of air a person can breathe in. After a forced expiration, this includes 
ERV, TV and IRV or the maximum volume of air a person can breathe out after a force inspiration. Total lung capacity TLC, total volume of air accommodated in the lungs at the end of force inspiration. It this include RV, ERV, TV and IRV or vital capacity plus residual volume. 14.3 Exchange of Gases Alveoli are the primary site of exchange of gases. Exchange of gases also occur between blood and tissue. Oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged in this site by simple diffusion mainly based on pressure, concentration, gradient, solubility of the gases as well as thickness of the membrane involved in diffusion are also some important factor that can affect the rate of diffusion. Pressure contributed by an individual gas in a mixture of gases is called partial pressure and is represent as PO2 from oxygen and PCO2 from carbon dioxide. Partial pressure of these two gases in the atmospheric air and the two sides of diffusion are given in table 14.1 and in table 14.3 the data given in the table clearly indicate a concentration gradient of oxygen from alveoli to blood and blood to tissue similarly a gradient is present for co2 in the opposite direction that means from tissue to blood and blood to alveoli as the solubility of co2 is 20 to 25 percent times higher than that of O2, the amount of CO2 that can diffuse through the diffusion membrane per unit difference in partial pressure is much higher compared to that of O2. The diffusion membrane is made up of three major layers, namely the thin squamous epithelium of alveoli, the endothelium of alveoli capillary, and the basement substance composed of a thin basement membrane supporting the squamous epithelium and the basement membrane surrounding the single layer endothelial cell of capillary in between them. However, its total thickness is much less than a millimeter. Therefore, all the factors in our body are favorable for diffusion of O2 from alveoli to tissue and that of CO2 from tissue to alveoli 14.4 transport of gases blood is the medium of transport of o2 and co2 about 97 percent of o2 is transported by rbc's in the blood the remaining three percent of o2 is carried in a dissolved state through the plasma nearly 20 to 25 percent of co2 is transported by rbc's whereas 70 percent of it is carried as bicarbonate about 7% of CO2 is carried in a dissolved state through plasma. 14.4.1 Transport of Oxygen Hemoglobin is a red color iron containing pigment present in the RBCs. O2 can bind with hemoglobin in a reversible manner to form oxyhemoglobin. Each hemoglobin molecule can carry a maximum of 4 molecules of O2 binding of oxygen with Hemoglobin is primarily related to partial pressure of O2. Partial pressure of CO2, hydrogen, iron concentration and temperature are the other factors which can interfere with this binding. A sigmoid curve is obtained when percentage saturation of hemoglobin with O2 is plotted against the PO2. This curve is called oxygen dissociation curve and is highly useful in studying the effect of factor like PCO2 plus H plus concentration etc on binding of O2 with hemoglobin. In the alveoli where the there is high PO2, low PCO2, lesser H plus concentration and lower temperature the factor are all favorable for the formation of oxyhemoglobin whereas in the tissue where low PO2, high PCO2 and high H plus concentration and higher temperature exists the condition are favorable for dissociation of oxygen from the oxyhemoglobin. This clearly indicates that O2 gets bound to hemoglobin in the lung surface and get dissociated at the tissues. Every 100 ml of oxygenated blood 
can deliver around 5 ml of O2 to the tissue under normal psychological condition. 14.4.2 Transport of carbon dioxide CO2 is carried by hemoglobin as carbaminohemoglobin about 20 to 25 percent this binding is related to the partial pressure of co2 po2 is a major factor which could affect this binding when pco2 is higher and po2 is lower as in the tissue more binding of carbon dioxide occur whereas when the pco2 is low and po2 is high as in the alveoli dissociation of co2 from carbaminohemoglobin Take place that means CO2 which is bound to hemoglobin from the tissues is delivered at the alveoli. RBC contain a very high concentration of the enzymes, carbonic and hydrase and net quantities for the same is present in the plasma too. This enzyme facilitates the following reaction in both direction. At the time site where partial pressure of co2 is high due to catabolism co2 diffuses into blood rbcs and plasma and form hco3 minus and h plus at the alveolar side where pco2 is low the reaction proceeds in the opposite direction leading to the formation of co2 and h2o the co2 trapped as bicarbonate at the tissue level and transported to the alveoli is released out as CO2 every 100 ml of deoxygenated blood deliver approximately 4 ml of CO2 to the alveoli. 14.5 Regulation of Respiration Human beings have a significant ability to maintain and moderate the respiratory rhythm to suit the demand of the body tissue. This is done by the natural neural system a specialized center present in the medulla region of the brain called respiratory rhythm center is primarily responsible for this regulation another center present in the pons regions of the brain called pneumotoxic center can moderate the function of respiratory rhythm central neural signal from the center can reduce the duration of inspiration and thereby alter the respiratory rate a Chemosensitive area is situated adjacent to the rhythm center, which is highly sensitive to CO2 and hydrogen ions. Increase in the substance can activate this center, which is turned can signal by the rhythm center to make necessary adjustments in the respiratory process by which this substance can be eliminated. Receptors associated with aortic arc and cardiac artery also can recognize. Changes in CO2 and H plus concentration and send necessary signal to the rhythm center for remedial action. The role of oxygen in the regulation of respiratory rhythm is quite significant. 14.6 Disorders of Respiratory System Asthma ya Asthma is a difficulty in breathing causing wheezing due to inflammation of bronchi and bronchioles. Emphysema is a chronic disorder in which alveolar walls are damaged due to which respiratory surface is decreased. One of the major cause of this is cigarette smoking. Occupational respiratory disorders in certain industries, especially those involving grinding or Stone breaking so much dust is produced that the defense mechanism of the body cannot fully cope with the situation. Long exposure can give rise to inflammation leading to fibrosis, prolification of fibrous tissue, and thus causing serious lung damage. Worker in such industries such should wear protective masks. Thank you.